hey everyone welcome back to my channel so this was a requested video and it's study tips on how to succeed in your respiratory therapy program in this video i'm going to tell you some tips that i use and then some tips that my classmates use that i did was organization i went and bought a big calendar that is in my room and we had a printout of when everything was due what tests, what chapters are going to be in that test, what quizzes, what checkoffs we're going to do for that week. Excuse me. So I bought a calendar and I put all that information on the calendar. That way I'm organized and I can see what actually I need to do before the due date and what I need to study. Because my program is considered fast paced. So it's 18 months, whereas normal programs are two years. And in that two year time frame, it's not just your basics in that two years. Well, for us, it's like five months of basics and then the rest is just respiratory. So we had a test every week. So buying a calendar, putting it on my wall really helped me organize. It really helped me decide what I need to study so that I don't overwhelm myself. The best way that I learn is by teaching other people and I'm very hands-on. I'm a visual learner. That's how I've always been. So in 210, we didn't go to clinicals. Everything we learned uh, was reading a PowerPoint and then we would go to the lab and try to apply it there. So I did pass 210 with an A, but I had to, I met with my study group. We met at least three or four times a week and we would be on for about an hour to two hours. We requested that our teacher do a review session before our test. So on Sundays when she was off, she would do review sessions. I asked a lot of questions in class as well. We were like on campus and then COVID hit and then we were online. So that was tricky, but I still asked a lot of questions. So that's like three tips straight away. Just make a study group. Okay, you're gonna be with these people for a very long time. Make a study group. Honestly, connections is very important. Talk to everybody. Ask your teachers for reviews, ask them questions. Like you're paying for this program. And if you don't get something, you need to speak up. Cause if you're just gonna be quiet about it, you're not gonna pass the test, you're not gonna pass the class, you're not gonna get the material. So ask questions, ask for outside help. Yeah, um, YouTube, YouTube is such a big advantage right now. If you had questions, if you don't understand something, go on YouTube and there's other people out there that can probably explain it better or in a different way that you might understand it better. Uh, for lab checkoffs, I used YouTube a lot because once again, we weren't on campus, so I couldn't physically see this stuff being done. So being able to go onto YouTube and watch how to set up a breathing treatment, like, you know, the basic stuff, how to put a patient on BiPAP, just little things like that really helped me out. Um, so those are some of my tips for you straight away. I asked my classmates, what are some things that they did? Um, uh, YouTube was another one, respiratory therapy zone. Remember that website. I will probably put it down in the link, but it is so important because that website helps you so much. They even have a test bank. Um, and on that test bank, sometimes your questions from your exams are on those test banks too. Those test banks are so good because it really tests your knowledge of what you learn and how to incorporate them as well. Quizlet. When I met with my team, we just went on to Google and typed in Quizlet. Most people use Egan's. I think that's like the most common book, especially for starting out your basic therapeutical stuff and all that your basis is going to be an Egan's textbook and just type in Egan's chapter 11 Quizlet so many Quizlets will pop up and we just went through and read them off now there's going to be some where it's just like terms and what it is we did the questions it's going to ask you a question and you have to figure out what the answer is that was another thing during our group sessions, what we did was we went through the PowerPoints, but we didn't like read it word for word. We went through and was like, oh, this is what this is because this is how you apply it in the actual setting. And that really helped me learn. 
especially for like my other classmates, I caught myself kind of teaching them ways that I remember things. And when I teach somebody something, I remember it as well. So take turns trying to teach and have them teach you because it's gonna retain in your memory and, uh, and you won't even realize it. So we went through our PowerPoint, so it was real quick. And then we're like, okay, the next day, we're gonna go work on Quizlet. And we pulled up a Quizlet set and we would do two or three sets. Let me tell you, they're not short. They're like 150 questions per set. So that's something else you wanna utilize. Um, note taking, I, I take notes, but ask me if I ever go back over them and read them. I don't, but I can connect it because I'm all like, if we do our Quizlets and our group sessions, I'm like, oh, I remember writing that down. So I flip back through. I'm like, yes, this is what this is. The reason you should take notes is because you can when you're writing them and you're you're listening you're subconsciously remembering this information so take notes even if you don't go back and read them because i still take notes even for a test we just had recently i wasn't fully listening but i was taking notes to important stuff um my test was like oh i remember writing that down yesterday i remember typing it up yesterday because i was in my notes Little things like that is going to really help ingrading your brain and in your memory session as well. So definitely take notes. Um, try to write down the important aspect. Even even the littlest things, sometimes you don't need to know. And your teacher will even tell you, ah, that's okay. You know, that's not too much important. But if they really emphasize something, that's something that you want to write down. Try to summarize what a slide's about. Because sometimes these slides are like 90 slides long. And you don't need to write every little thing down either. Um, what are some... A funny one. My friend says she takes two shots of tequila a week. That's what helps her as well to make it through our program. But she has a four-year-old son. So I get I get where she's coming from. Uh, us parents who are in these programs, you know, it's hard for us. It's very hard. There's another girl in my program who has two boys. I'm just like, oh, couldn't be me. Now, if you are going to clinicals, because when you get to your section ventilators, I think ventilators are such a very hard topic. And with us not really being on campus like that, it, that's just a, that's just a like a topic where you want to be on campus because I guarantee you you're not going to get you're not going to understand it when they're talking about it. The only way you understand it is if you, if you put your hands on a bit and you physically see what they're saying. That is. And that may be just a visual type of learner I am, but my whole class struggled with vents in 2.30. Our last four weeks of term in 2.30, which is our vents term, we went to clinicals. So when we went to clinicals is when I finally was like, okay, I don't understand anything about vents. Like, that's what we're learning. Please teach me. And they broke it down and taught me. And then it just clicked. Everything that we talked about made sense. All the modes, all the functions everything just clicked because I could physically see it happening and I can see what it was doing to a patient, how it was helping, um, how it was working. Like it just, it made total sense. So now vents, I'm comfortable with vent settings. We've been doing practice tests for our boards. I get the vents. Like those are the questions that I actually pass. So ask questions when you go to clinicals. Um, don't be the person that sits back and doesn't say anything. If your preceptor says, do you want to do this? Say yes and get in there and do it. You can be nervous. That is okay. You can tell them, like I verbally told them, I'm like, yeah, I want to do this, but I'm going to let you know, I'm so nervous. Can you walk through it with me? Be eager because if they see that you're eager to learn, one, that looks good and they'll probably hire you if you're a really good uh, student. Remember, when you're at clinicals, that is your job interview. Respiratory, any field is all about connections. And they always say the respiratory field is so small. So you always want to make a good impression. If you know something and they're teaching you something, don't be like, oh, well, I already know this. This is, don't, don't do that. You need to be open to everything. So I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, we learned this. But, you know, teach me your way. Because somebody else's way could be so much easier and simpler for you to understand. So 
open mind, always be willing to understand. And if you don't, if you don't know something or if something's really iffy and you want to ask a question, wait until you know the patient, step outside and say, hey, I don't really understand why we're doing this. Do you mind explaining it to me? There's nothing wrong with that. And if you feel like it should be something else, make the suggestion. Just be like, well, why won't we do this instead? And they can probably give you a good reason as to why they're not doing that. If you're at clinicals and you have a question and you're with a doctor, ask them a question. I talk to the dogs all the time. I'm all like, well, why are we doing this for this patient? Especially the COVID patients in my ICU rotations. I talk to the pulmonologist all the time. I'm all like, now, why are we doing this? Are you not worried about this? Now, time and place. You don't do it in front of the patient and if they look like they're busy or doing rounds, don't ask questions like that. Pick and choose when you can ask questions and when you need to hold it in and maybe ask later and come back. So asking questions, take notes. Um, we didn't really bring our books like that. So I just pulled out my phone on my notes and I was like typing up my notes as they were teaching me. I took a study guide book with me because they told me one of the URTs I was following was really good and really loved to teach people. So I still had some questions about BiPAP, how to adjust it, especially reading with AVGs. And once we were done with rounds, he sat down and broke it all down for me. So be that student that's eager to learn and not ask questions. And I promise you, it will just all come back into your memory bank. And if these tips don't help you, I don't know what else to tell you. I, I'm I'm a visual learner, so these are things that helped me, and then these are things that have helped my classmates too. If you're a photographic memory person, kudos to you. I love you. I wish I had that type of memory. If you're a logic type of learner, definitely look at some scenario cases that will really help uh, into your memory process. Like, okay, I really don't get the logic behind this. Oh, okay, well, this patient is suffering from this this and that and here's why we do this because this is what's going to help and this is what's going to this is what's in the process of helping that patient there's always different ways of learning to help the type of learner you are but i just feel these are some things that really helped me succeed and why i've been doing so well in my classes as well um i hope you guys liked this video give it a thumbs up if you like it um leave more comments a video that I'm going to do next is I'm going to take you guys to work with me just so you can see what I do and to just show you like I'm going to show you some ventilators because in our stock room there's ventilators back there. I'm going to show you a lot of our equipment too. Um, I'll show you like our NICU stock room, our ICU stock room. I'll show you all that. I have work tonight so I'm going to do that. That video may not come out for a while so be patient. And another thing that we did recently was the Kettering review. Now you guys know that this is my last term and I have, I think it's six, six or five weeks left. I think it's five actually, I have five weeks left of my program. So we're, we're literally preparing to take our boards. I think I take my practice clean Sims next week. Um, so we did a Kettering review last week and let me tell you, it was amazing. Like it was so amazing. If your school pays for that, if they don't, you need to pay for it. It was a four day review and it was amazing. I'll do a whole nother video on reviewing just that and kind of tell you some tips that they told me that has really helped me. Cause I think some of my uh, people who watch my videos are currently in a respiratory program. So if you're currently in one, definitely look out for that video because it helped so much. But I will talk to you guys next time and thank you again.